message for today is time flies, go forth. Amen? Time flies, go forth. Now, you may ask, uh, Pastor Ben, how does time fly? It has no wings like a bird, but time does fly. And the Latin uh, phrase is tempus fugit, time flies. Now, we are admonished in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 5, in the Living Bible version. Chapter uh, 10, verse 5, verse 5 says, A wise youth makes hay while the sun shines. But what a shame to see a lad who sleep away his hour of opportunity. Now, our relation with time changes as we grow older. When we are young, time seems to move at a very slow pace, you know, especially in anticipation of huge events. I remember waiting interminably for Christmas to come around as a young lad. You know, every event, waiting for Easter, waiting for this, it seemed like it was an eternity. And then something happens when you become a man uh, uh, with responsibilities. It seems like th time does this. It just, you know, flows and goes around and, and fasten and hasten and everything is on fast forward motion. So here, the book of Proverbs is advising the youth, the young person, as well as those who are still young at heart to make hay while the sun shines, you know, not to waste or sleep away their hour of opportunity. Amen? So we want to talk about time flying and what we're supposed to do with our time. Amen. Another, you know, uh, famous Latin phrase is something we call capi diem, which is to seize the day or maximize the moment. Amen? Capi diem, seize the day or maximize the moment. Now I want to share another scripture with you. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1 says this, seek God early in life. He says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days and years draw nigh, when you say, I have no pleasure in them. You know, the, the Bible admonishes you to serve God in the vigor of youth, because there are difficult days that come ahead. And the years draw nigh when you will say, oh, I, I can't do this. I, I'm not able to do this. So again, ceasing up on the, on the theme of the flight of time, the successive flight of time, the furtive flight of time, we are reminded to serve God and remember him in the days of our youth. Amen? I want to share another one. Amen. Another one of these awakening scriptures. Amen. Here it is. In John chapter 9, verse 4, you know, moving from the Old Testament Ecclesiastes to the New Testament, Jesus himself said this, John chapter 9, verse 4, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. You know, so in life, we talk about seasons. You know, there is a time to work and a time to rest. There is daytime where you make hay while the sun is still shining. And there is the nighttime when no man can toil no more, where you need to rest so your body can replenish the stock that is exasperated on the daily effort. So we must seize this theme of working at the right time, making hay while the sun shines. You know, it's a common uh, a maxim, in, in uh, a cross-cultural maxim that a stitch in time saves nine. Amen? Hallelujah. So we'll continue to look at this flight of time and how we are supposed to deal with it. Amen? So the next concept is the concept of timeliness, excuses. You know, back, we, re, we return back to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 13, which says this, the lazy person claims there is a lion out there. If I go out, I might be killed. You know, this is an excuse. Many people refuse to work or refuse to do what they ought to do because the conditions are not perfect or because there's something out there that scares them. So we are admonished to not make excuses like this. We must make hay while the sun shines. The lazy person claims there's a lion out there. If I go outside, I might be killed. 
You know, those who look to the wind will never sow. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, there are two things in the realm of timeliness that we must do. One is sowing. Now, remember, in the book of Genesis, it says, as, as long as the earth remains, these two things shall remain constant. There is seed time and harvest time. Amen? So you must sow. Ecclesiastes, again, chapter uh, Ecclesiastes 11, verse 4, uh, says this. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. You know, some of your versions will say, those who look to the wind will never sow. And that is exactly right. Because you cannot wait for pitch perfect conditions before you do what you're supposed to do. Amen. God will bless the work of your hands in the middle of a storm. He will bless you, the work of your hands in the middle of a hurricane. Step out on faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen. Now, there's another thing that you do after you sow, and that is harvesting. Glory to God. How do you harvest? Hallelujah. Amen. He says, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will rip, will get a generous crop. It is just, you know, natural law. You cannot plant small and expect a bountiful harvest. Now, can God bless you you know, out of the, uh, the little of, the, of your might? Yes, absolutely. But when you plant little, don't expect to hit the jackpot. You know, so plant generously if you want a generous harvest. It's just a natural law, amen? And then we'll look again at what Christ says, um, Apostle Paul says really about planting and harvesting. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it talks about giving. Now, giving isn't exactly the same thing as sowing and harvesting, but it does share the same, you know, results. You know, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I want to begin in, in uh, verse 10. It says, for God is the one who gives seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. It is all from God. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources, then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. You know, so what this is saying is that God is the sole provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, you know, and in consonant with your effort, in consonant with your disposition, God will grant you increase so that you will produce a great harvest of generosity. Verse 11, yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when you take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank you. See, God blesses you, not so that you can become this humongous wealthy person, but so that you have to share with others. God channels his blessings through his people. Now, if you will make yourself available, God will continue to pour out his blessings through you. And in your generosity, two things are going to happen in verse 12. In verse 12, Two things. So when you do this and you give generously of that which God has blessed you with, so two good things will result from the ministry of giving. Hallelujah. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem and all over the world will be met. That's the number one good thing. And they would joyfully express their thanks to God. So not only do you meet their needs, you, keep, you cause them to provoke joy in heaven by giving thanks to the Almighty God. Hallelujah. You know, so we also know and we hear often when people say double for your trouble. Amen. So when you give, when you're in this ministry of giving, you, are, you get double for your trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we talk about sowing seeds, it is often always at the level of, you know, uh, uh, food and provisions. But let us dig a little further now and look at good works. Amen. Ministry beyond food. Amen. This is beyond food. And this is beyond meat. You know, for scripture says that the, the kingdom of heaven is not, you know, a meat and drink, but of righteousness, peace, and joy. 
of, in the Holy Ghost. So 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 in the New Living Translation says this. This is the ministry beyond food. This is another type of work that you should be doing. Why? The sun shines. He said, preach the word of God. Be prepared. Whether the time is favorable or not, patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. Amen? So God wants us to be faithful in sharing the good news of the gospel. Now, you don't have to sit behind the pulpit. You don't have to be ordained as a minister. And I'll show you in a little while that God intends for each and every one of us to be in the, in the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. You know, so ministry and working, making hay while the sunshine is not only about uh, putting bread on your table, but it's also about laying treasures for eternity. Amen. Let me break it down further. Evangelism. You've heard of evangelism. A lot of people think of evangelism as a profession. You know, but here it is in Second in Second Corinthians chapter five verse eighteen. If you've heard this before, and I want to emphasize it, verse eighteen, and all of this, all of what salvation is a gift from God, who brought us back to Himself through Christ. The reconciliation back to God came through the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary's hill. And then after he had done that, and God had given us, us, the believers, the task of reconciling people back to him. Hallelujah. So Christ, when after he had finished the work on Calvary, commanded his apostles to go into the world and do likewise. So this is the work, another kind of work I'm talking about. Beyond making hay while the sun shines, beyond keeping your hand busy, is also this dimension of faith where we have a job to do. And this task of reconciling people back to God. It is for all believers. You know, there's no place to hide. You can share it and God gives, gives you the gift, you know, and the ability. And the Holy Spirit will gift you in the instance when you make up your mind to share, whether it be favorable or not. Hallelujah. You know, evangelism is one type of work that all of us are called to do. Amen. Now there's another one. We are called to be righteous. It says, be ye holy as your father is holy. Amen. Righteousness earns, it, it, no, righteousness is the nature of eternal life. Because God is holy and eternity will be spent with God, our eternal life, for a fact, must be holy. Amen? Let's look at this scripture in John chapter 4, verses 35 and 36. It says, you know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. Again, seed time and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. Hallelujah. Now he's talking about souls. The harvesters are paid good wages. The fruit, just in case we didn't get it, the fruit that they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike. Hallelujah. If this message isn't clear, I want it to be crystal clear. Time flies go forth. What do you go forth to do? You go forth to do the job that God has appointed for you to do. And that job is to win souls for the kingdom of God. And you can win souls through intercessory prayer. You can win souls through street evangelism. You can win souls through uh, good works, examples, random acts of kindness. You can win souls in your closet by leveling mountains, by praying, by interceding in the behalf of people. There are a number of ways, there are a variety of ways to explore it. If you are the kind that is shy, if you are the kind that is inarticulate and you're not, you're slow of speech like Moses was, or you're shy around people, there are other ways to participate in soul winning. Hallelujah. And God surely intends for us to do this work until he returns. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Now, you cannot really do this work without 
answering the call. Amen. And every time and every opportunity that I get, I like to make an altar call. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, uh, ch chapter 10, verse 9, for if you tell others with your own mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal uh, uh, Lord, and you believe in your own heart that God's raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Simple as that. You confess it, you believe him, you believe in him, and you invite him, and you shall be saved. So I want you to do that with me right now. Whether you're listening to this message uh, in, uh, in real time or after the fact, if you say this prayer and believe it in your heart, God will honor it and you will receive your salvation. Amen. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and I invite you to come into my heart and life today, this minute. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you just said that prayer, you are welcome to the kingdom of God and you are a believer. And this work of reconciliation is expected of you. Amen. But let me leave you with three uh, little instructions, you know, because the adversary of our souls will come to you after this prayer and tell you nothing's changed. That was just mere words. You're the same. You have the same challenges, etc. But these three things you must do going forward. One, talk to God every day. We call that prayer. Now you say, talk to him about what? Talk to him about everything that concerns you. Your pain, your joy, your victories, your failures, your successes. Everything that you uh, 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 want to talk to God about, he's ready to listen. Amen? And two, read the Bible every day. God talks to you through his word. You know, as you continue to uh, grow in your relationship with God, he will speak to you specifically and, and through his word. That's called Rhema, the spoken word. And you will begin to get a sense of this work that he has for you. And he carves out, you know, your portion in the vineyard. And the Holy Spirit will gift you with all the giftings that you need to carry out the work because he equips you for ministry. Amen. And then lastly, join a Bible-believing church and you will grow and mature into the purpose of God's calling in your life. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, it gives me great joy to share this message. It gives me great joy and great consolation to know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Let us pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that we will not only be hearers of your word, but doers of it. Amen. That it will be pleasing in your sight. Father, I call this list, I call those within the sound of my voice blessed. They are above and not beneath. They are the head and not the tail. And everything they put their hands to this week shall prosper and be successful. Father, I thank you because there is no one like you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory.